Mary. It was a heart attack. It was a uh, Monday morning. I had gone out to walk my dog and came back in the house, or actually as I was coming back, I kind of felt bad. And I had a little, a little bit of discomfort in the middle of my chest. And then as I got to my yard, we live on a corner, okay. and I looked across my yard and I was like, I am so exhausted. I can't make it across that yard. But I did, mm -hmm. and I got into the house, and I went in and sat down on the sofa, mm -hmm. and I was just exhausted and just not feeling well. So I said to my dog, I said, Imani, go get daddy. Mm -hmm. And we have a rule in our house that the dog does not go upstairs without someone, mm -hmm. because, you know, dogs do stuff. and. So she went up the stairs and my husband says, Imani, what are you doing up here? And I, and I said, Carl, I need you. And he came downstairs and he, I said, I'm not feeling good. I don't know what's going on. And he says, well, how, do you, how are you feeling? I said, I just feel like I just have this pain and I just feel like I wanna just burp. I have this gas or something and I just can't get rid of it. And he says, should I call the ambulance? I said, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. Let me, you know, cause I was getting ready to go to work. Nice. I said, I'll be all right. And then, I, then he says, here, take this aspirin. Mm -hmm. Why he said that we don't know. Mm -hmm. And we only attribute that to God. Mm -hmm. And so I took an aspirin and I just didn't feel, he says, I'm calling 911. Well, he called 911, and interestingly enough, they came, and they came fairly quickly. And the guy came in, and he's assessing me. He does my blood pressure. He's asking me all the questions, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, um, you know, I really feel okay. I just, I'm going to get ready and go to work, and I don't need you guys. And he said to me, he says, all right, well, I need you to fill out these papers to say that you are not going with us. And I said, okay. And I was filling out the paper, and at that moment, another ambulance company drives up to the house. What I did not know is that the first ambulance that came, as they were coming into our, into our area where we live, like I said, we live on a corner, mm -hmm. instead of getting the turn, he lost his brakes and slid down in front of our house. Oh so God. he had called another ambulance to transport me. Okay. Okay. And so the second gentleman came in and he says, well, she doesn't want to go with us. She says she's just having some indigestion. She wants to go, um, go to work. And so he says to me, he says, well, let me ask you a couple questions first. And he went on, you know, you ever had this before? Anybody in your family ever have a heart attack? And I said, yeah, my mother had a heart attack at age 36. And he says, you're going with us. And, you know, I know that was God in the works. So I went to the hospital and Piedmont was on diversion. So I was sent down to Southern Regional. And I got down there and they did all this work and what have you. And one of the tests, which is a troponin test, which indicates heart muscle um, activity or um, and a problem with the heart muscle. Okay. And it was very high. Mm -hmm. And he says, the guy comes back, he says, well, Ms. McNear, I think you've had a heart attack. I said, oh no, I haven't had a heart attack. I said, I feel fine. Mm -hmm. And he says, you've had a heart attack. So I said, oh, okay, so my goodness, what is this all about? And I said, ah. Uh. And then I, you know, got very teary because my mom, as I said, had a heart attack at age 30. Her first one was at 32. Mm -hmm. And then she had another one at 36, which was a massive heart attack, and she died. And so I was very teary eyed, and my husband's like, you know, it's going to be all right, it's going to be all right. Now, at that time, when I was working for Kaiser Permanente, and I had just started working there the beginning of September. And they made the arrangement that I would not stay at Southern Regional 
would go to Piedmont. Good. And they took me to Piedmont. And when I got to Piedmont, they said, do you have a surgeon? Do you have a cardiologist? And I said, no. My husband said, well, we know of one, and we did know of one. And so we said, well, maybe we should consult her. And her name was Dr. Sheila Robbins. And so she came in all business-like and what have you. And she says, oh, well, we'll see what's going on. We'll send you to get a uh, test, and we'll, that'll tell us what happened. Mm -hmm. Well, my thing is, that, you know, I didn't have breakfast, and now it's past lunch, and I'm hungry. <laughs> I said, well, can I eat? And she says, no, wait until after the tests are done so we know for sure. Well, the test didn't get done right away, and they finally sent me a sandwich. And then she came back and after the test, and she says, it looks like you have had a heart attack. You had a dissection of one of the vessels in your heart called the LAD. And I said... Being a nurse, I kind of was in my head thinking about what these vessels are in the heart. Mm -hmm. And I knew that this one was on the back side of the heart. And I was like, hmm, okay. And she says, yes, yeah. so she said, it is a uh, dissection there. And she says, I'm sure it is going to extend itself because it's just a small vessel. Okay. So you've had a heart attack and you'll probably have another one. Mm -hmm. So they admitted me, gave me all these tests and what have you. And um, then two days later, I was lying in bed and all of a sudden, I had the, what I consider the pain of my life. Mm. And, the, and what was happening is that I was having the second heart, heart attack. The LAD, except where it split, it just extended to the end of it. And they rushed me wherever. And I was <laughs> in this state where I was like in a dream mm -hmm. kind of thing. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, what's mm -hmm. going on? Mm -hmm. And I looked up and there was this one nurse that was there, was a male nurse. And he said to me, he said, we're going to take care of you, Miss McNair. Don't worry. Just, you know, just relax. Just relax. And, you know, and aside to that is this was during the time when the movie Touched by an Angel was coming yes, on. Yes, yes. And I could have sworn that that was the angel that always came when people were dying, the angel of death. Mm -hmm. I could have sworn that was him. He kind of looked like this guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, you know, that's what I thought. So, yeah. you know, that was what happened. So I ended up in ICU. Okay. And when I woke up, uh, after they, whatever they did, and I went to them all through all the medications and the testing and what have you, and I, I woke up and I looked up and I said, I didn't die. Because I saw people and I saw, you know, and I heard noises and I was like, I didn't die. Yes. And so I ended up staying in the hospital for approximately another five days and in the meantime it was our wedding anniversary my mm. husband and I mm -hmm. so my husband made all these arrangements and came to the ICU mm -hmm. with um, sparkling apple cider and oh, and, and, and at a dinner uh -huh. it was something that I could eat okay. and okay. interestingly enough because of the way they had me in, in what's called Trendelenburg I was kind of upside down almost um, the way they were you know, as far as treatment, so I kind of had a fun time eating it, but it was really nice. He had balloons and all That's the rest, sweet. so that was real sweet. Mm -hmm. So, and I recovered from that. I took um, some time off, and I did rehab and all the rest. Mm -hmm. And after the, you know, then I went back to work. I have not had any problems since then, mm -hmm. and I, it made me really think that I needed to continue my exercise, I believe that had I not been exercising, which I had always done, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I might have had a, a rougher time of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But as it turned out, it was, you know, not a big dish. And I recuperated well, and I'm here to tell about it today. And that happened in October, um, October 18th, uh, 1999. I was 12 when my mother had the first heart attack and 16 when she had the fatal heart attack. So we had not had 
that many years to talk about being healthy and what have you. And my mother truly was not healthy. My mother was overweight. She had seven children. She was burning the candles at both ends. She was working, taking care of all of us, and, you know, just doing a whole lot of other things. She was, you know, pretty much hands-on mom. She would attend all of our school things and that sort of thing. But she was working pretty hard. And when I think about it, I only had one child, and I know how hard it was mm -hmm. to, you know, keep up with all the things that she was involved in. Mm -hmm. I cannot imagine my mother keeping up with all seven of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have so many things in our family history medically. You know, we have the heart disease, we have diabetes, we have histories of strokes and stuff of that sort. I wish and I, I wish this on a regular basis, that my mom had been one to take care of herself so she could have been around longer to be with us. I, I do miss her and I miss her immensely every day.